Well, I want to give you an example for chapter 11 of how to use um, Excel to compute some of the problems. So what's on the left hand side of the screen is the textbook Excel file that you find in the class website. Um, so there's one for practically every chapter. I really don't necessarily go through them with you very much. Um, when you're going through your ebook, you will see pictures of Excel files. It kind of looks like a copy paste. And so they're using these files to illustrate examples in your book. And then they give us the actual files, which I posted all of them for you to take a look at. Just whenever you want. And for some chapters, it makes more sense to look at them closer than others. It's kind of just, your, just however you want to go deep with it. Um, but I thought I would just use the base example that the PowerPoint gave us where we had two projects, L and S. And um, I just want to show you how Excel can use these to do the calculations. I think what you'll discover is when you do your homework, you probably just want to come over, jump into the Excel file and do your work there. So I've got projects S and L on the left. I just left everything as is, just the numbers that they gave us. So we're going to go through and just overwrite. So we're going to use the numbers on the right. So I just thought I would just do that with everybody. Oops. And I didn't hit my num lock, so all of a sudden I got a goofy thing there. So let me do that again. Goes minus 100 is, I'm going to, I'll do project S first, which is 70, 50, and 20. I got to make sure I just zero out that, that last year because we don't want to use that one. And then for L, it was still a minus 100. And then it was 10, 60, 80, and then get rid of that last number. Okay. And so um, we're going to change the, the rate. We also make sure we're using the right rate. So this is 10%. That's what we're going to use. But um, when you're doing your homework in MindTap, just keep in mind you got to come over here and make sure you update the correct WAC percent in here also. But what this shows us then is how this works um, conceptually. Now, this one I just left. These numbers here didn't change. But, or Actually, they did change. Uh, but they left these numbers here. These little numbers right here didn't change. Um, so you can't necessarily use this one, but it's just showing you the picture of how this works. Uh, NPV takes all these future cash flows, bring it, brings it back to time zero using the appropriate uh, rate, and then compares them or nets them against the initial cash outflow. So we're going to look at this one right here. So I'm going to double click on this so you can see the formula. And so the formula here is at negative 100. And then it's all the positives after that. Now, what I'm going to do is because this was just a three year, I'm just going to move the cursor over one spot. I don't want to pick up that last year. OK, um, so I get 18.78 okay, is my answer. And this one, the formula is built to just solve project um, L for us. But we can double check that on the right when we go and take a look at the NPV formula right here for project L and just round it a little bit. I got 18.79 on the right versus 18.78 right here. But that's how you do that. It's really simple. That Excel formula is just simply the NPV formula. You can see it up here. Okay, you can see exactly what it's bringing in. It highlights all the cells it's bringing in. The WAC up here, the initial cash outflow, all the future positives. Okay, so that's the general format that you would follow. So you can just easily use this as a template um, to do those kinds of calculations. So we can do the same thing for IRR. And uh, we'll come back and just kind of show you how that works out. So remember what IRR does is computing an interest rate. It's taking a series of cash flows, bringing them back today. And it's trying to find what rate will force those cash flows to net to zero. Okay, that's whatever rate will do that is your answer for IRR. So I'm going to use, uh, I think this is the one that's going to pull it. Oops, I'm going to have to enter them both looks like. Looks like they both are just computing numbers right above. So let's just do both here. Um, let's do, let's go back to these numbers here. And let's just do project S this time. So I'll do minus 100. Um, then I do 70, 50, 20. I'll zero out that last number. I don't have a four-year project. I have a three-year project. And then I have to double check this formula again. I don't want to pick up that last year, right? I just want to pick up time zero and the positive cash flow years. So hit enter on that and I get 23.56. And so this was project S. We can go down to where that's at here on the right hand side. And it's this number right here, 23.56, 23.564. This rounded to three decimals, 
This one rounded to two decimals. So once you see the formula again for that, so it's IRR, and I just pick up the whole range. I'm picking up time zero and all the future numbers. But it's important that you only pick up the appropriate number of years. In this example, it was a three-year project. Okay. So anyways, that's part of how you do that. And then skip the MI, the multiple IRR stuff. We'll go down to the MIRR section right here, what they call the modified IRR. And we'll kind of do the same thing. And what I like about this section down here is it kind of shows us a few different ways to get there using the rate formula. Remember, the rate formula came from Chapter 7 and the MIRR formula, which gives us the same answer. And they showed us how to use the calculator method also right here. So they all have the same answer. We don't have to worry about that. I'm really going to focus on this last one, the MIRR right here. Oops, double click the wrong thing. Let me get back to that right here. Let me double click that better. There we go. So here's my inputs, okay? And I just got to make sure that I enter the appropriate amounts. So we'll go back on the right and grab uh, all my cash flows that I've been using. And this one is for, let's go ahead and do project. This says S, we'll just use S on the right. So it's a 10% project, 10% WAC minus 100 and then I have the 70, 50, 20 and then 0. Nada. And then down here I gotta just double click on the formula and I don't want to include that last year again. Okay, I just want to include years 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and so I hit enter on that and I get my answer. So on the right hand side we'll go back to MIRR and do that. And we'll get to Project S, and let's see, Project S, uh, this is L, 16.5, I did 16.89, um, I'm not seeing it, but I'm sure it's in there somewhere, of what that number would be, but that's, that's how you do it. We can obviously just change it to be these numbers too. Let's use these numbers right here, since I've got those in front of me. So go 10, we'll go 60, and we'll go 80, okay? And then I get the 16.5. That's right here is my 16.5. And again, I only want to pick up the years that I'm including in my calculation. Zero, this is zero, zero, one, two, and three. Okay. I just took out that last year in this example. And so that formula is just the MIRR formula. It brings in the WAC and all the cash flows. Okay. Really simple. Excel just makes this really easy. So I just really want you to focus on using Excel to do these. And it will scroll down a little bit more. I'm going to go down to payback. So here is the payback right here. And let's do payback for this one right here. Um, this is project L. So let's go ahead and enter our number. So minus 100. Then I have 10, 60, and 80. And I'm just going to just get rid of, just delete those numbers right there. We don't need them. And then what I have to do here is I have to double click on this formula. I have to move it just a little bit. Because what I need to do is kind of recognize with the eyeball test that this goes negative to positive between years two and three. Okay, so I need to move this top one over to be year two. So my answer is two point something. Okay, um, it's not three point something, it's two point something. I have to move this one over to here, and I move this one over to here, and I hit enter, and then I've got my answer 2.38. Okay, so what you have to recognize is you have to adjust your cell references based on what year does it go negative to positive. So we, we have to recognize that my cumulative cash flow goes negative to positive between years two and three. That means my answer is two point something. Okay? It's not three point something, it's two point something. Then I have to just adjust the, the cells over to catch that, so it's 2.38. And the same thing for modified payback, recall, and this was Project L, so let's go back and do the L right here. And we have to make sure we put in the, the appropriate WAC, and we're still using 10%. So here I'm going to put in my new cash flows, minus 10, uh, 100, 10, 60, 80. And I'm just going to get rid of that last year. I don't need that. We're not using that last year, so this goes away. Double-click your formula. Same story as before. The answer is 2 point something because my cumulative cash flows go from negative to positive between years two and three. So I'm going to pick up year two, and then I just simply move my cell references over by one spot. 
So my answer is 2.69. Okay, but that's how you do that. So that one's you just have to recognize when I go negative to positive. If you don't recognize that, then you might get the answer wrong. So this one requires maybe a little bit more manipulation of the formula than the other ones do. Um, but that's all good examples for you to follow. You know, and as always, MindTap has videos. Just watch those videos. They do walkthroughs. They show you examples of how to do the various calculations. But I really want you to pick up on um, that you can use Excel for all the methods, NPV, IRR, MIRR, and both payback methods. And as always, if you have questions, just let me know. Thanks.